to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. Election managers report a robust response in the first couple of days of early voting in Knox County. And this morning, we're diving into a conversation about voter turnout. What are the expectations in the midterm election? And we'll offer some context about who tends to vote and who doesn't. We turn to a couple of experts for answers this morning. Chris Davis is the Assistant Administrator of Elections in Knox County. Nice to have you in. Glad to be here. Good to have you. And Dr. Katie Cahill is the Associate Director of the Howard Baker Jr. Center for Public Policy at the University of Tennessee. Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. I'm going to ask you questions momentarily. First to our panel on the end there is Don Bosch, runs his own law firm, and he is a Democrat. Good morning, John. Good morning. Susan Richardson Williams runs her own PR firm, and she is a Republican. Good morning, John. Good morning. John, my true north, is uh, <laughs> wow. the, the living bridge, <laughs> if you will, between digital and on-air content. We're living and creative on vacation. Every, it's amazing. You know, <laughs> living and breathing. <laughs> it really matters. Chris, let's start with you because at least the first day of early voting in Knox County blew the doors off. People got out. They did, and in fact, we set a record. It's a record that we, we think maybe ever in early voting, we know for the last 10 years at least, uh, including three presidential elections, that where we had the most voters come through the first day. And, and frankly, it's, it's a little bit of an anomaly, obviously, for a midterm when you look back at, at similar numbers. Uh, and, and the thing that interested me is all of the early voting sites I traveled to, I traveled to six the first day, I know Cliff traveled, my, my boss traveled to four, uh, it was everywhere. It wasn't just one or two sites. We had three sites, Eclipse 1,000, one of them Eclipse 2,000. Uh, it's just in the first day. Cliff mentioned that there were lines at all of the early voting locations, all 10 uh, on the first day of early voting. And the other thing that he mentioned was voter registrations. You've looked closely at that. And if you look at 2014 compared to 2018 in the time between January 1 and when voter registrations closed, mm -hmm. you doubled from 2014 voter registrations. We actually exceeded more than doubled. We went to 9,000 change, give or take, in 2014, and we had over 22,000, uh, give or take, uh, this year. So it's, uh, it's, it's obviously a and, – and the thing we saw is it was really – it was steady at the counter. It was steady online. We didn't have – uh, obviously online registration four years ago uh you know mailing them in a lot of groups doing voter registration drives so really pretty much every avenue in which you could register voters uh, they were really coming in quite quite robustly dr cahill yeah. you're the academic here when you hear those statistics what runs through your mind about what we're seeing well i'm wondering if it's sustainable because when we compare the 2014 numbers um in the primary to the 2018 primary that we just had a little bit ago we actually see that 69 counties actually dropped in their turnout and uh, knox county uh, was one of the ones that increased but um, just by 4%. And um, so that's pretty pretty low turnout, actually. In Knox County, it went from 20% in 2014 to just 24% um, in 2018. This was in August, just mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. So right. uh, that may raise some concerns. Can we see this registration momentum and, and other voting momentum carrying in November? Right. It will be interesting to see. Historically, um, as you probably know and many of your viewers <laughs> probably realize, is that, 20, um, is that midterm elections, there's less of a turnout than in presidential elections. Um, and so indefinitely turnout um, has been low generally in Tennessee, both in 2014 and 2016 when we compare it to other states in the U.S. And I'm going to get our panel involved here momentarily. But first, what does the typical voter look like in Knox County or in Tennessee? So the typical voter um, is actually um, older. That's probably no surprise. Um, in 2014, over 50 percent um, of those over the age of 65 did vote, compared to just over 11 percent of those between the ages of 18 and 24. So the voters are older. They tend to be um, white and a little bit wealthier than most. Um, and so education and class are the greatest predictors um, of who turns out to vote. And um, along with that is age. So Dr. Cahill, yeah. on that point, mm -hmm. um, this is one of the first times, if I heard Chris correctly, we've had online registration. Mm -hmm. And while that does not equate to online voting, which we mm -hmm. don't have, right. um, do you think that that will affect the outcome of the vote? Because we know that, frankly, people that are doing things like this online tend to be younger, not mm -hmm. older. Do you think that skews the, the age category for voting? 
You know, it's hard to say. Um, so the thing with um, younger voters is that they tend to be relatively transient and less connected to their local community. And so what that results in is maybe they get registered because they have a faculty member like myself who encourages them to do so online, but that doesn't necessarily translate to voting because of the fact that they either don't have information about where to go to vote or they just don't feel connected. Um, now, this election, since it has a huge national import because of the Senate race um, in particular and also the gubernatorial race, um, those younger voters may feel more motivated because they may feel like it's a bigger issue for and them. Chris, I know we do not keep, for example, party registration statistics and things of that nature, but is there any demographic you can point to that seems to be different than last as it relates to either the early vote or voter registration? I know you said all were, but do we have a lot more registration, say, from UT campus, or did we have a lot of registrations from deep West Knox County? Yeah, which and is anecdotally, I can tell you, you know, like I said, in 2014, we did about 9,000 and give or change, give or take, uh, voter registrations. This year alone, uh, the same time period that you mentioned, John, uh, over 8,000 of those 22,000 that I mentioned were from people 25 and younger. And so mm -hmm. we, we nearly equaled what we did in 2014 just from the 25 and under vote. And just anecdotally, I can tell you, people coming into our counter, people calling us, uh, a lot of young folks, a you, lot of young folks. You go to the schools, do you not? We have to. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we go by, by law, we have to go to every public and private high school every year to register folks. We typically do that in the spring just because it's, it usually works out for our calendar better. Uh, but I, I think I think maybe the League of Women Voters did like a, a drive at some of the local high schools recently. And so there's been a, um, I would just tell you anecdotally, there's been a large uptick in voter registration. Dr. Kale, that yeah. would likely, you're, you're the expert here, not, not Susan and I, despite <laughs> our thoughts sometimes. That would probably bode better for Democrats than Republicans, right? Well, across the country, um, younger voters tend to vote more liberal than older voters. That's true. Um, however, it's hard to know in Tennessee because Tennessee has um, recently, at least in the last 50 years or so, become a really red state. Um, and, and so it's hard to know how those younger voters who are probably socialized in their homes with their families, um, if they will hold that trend here in Tennessee. I do want to say that um, millennials have actually taken over as the largest voting bloc in the U.S. Um, over baby boomers now. Wow. And the thing is, is that they're just not exercising that power at the moment. It will be interesting to see what they do. What in you're saying, North and I are out now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could be. It depends on who shows up to the polls. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. Back with more of our conversation about voter turnout next.